Hello everyone, I am Surjit Roy, welcoming you to Moja for Industry Development Debate on Substation Maintenance, powered by Fluke India. Make the invisible visible for faster, easier and safer electrical inspections. Introducing the Fluke II-910 Precision Acoustic Imager, which lets you see the source of partial discharge and arcing, making it easier to quickly scan, locate, assess and report. The innovative technology uses an array of microphones, listening in high frequency ultrasound ranges up to 100 kilohertz to create a sound map which is displayed on the 7-inch screen. The II-910 Precision Acoustic Imager enables you to easily scan large areas from a distance in order to get the job done faster and safer. It's built tough for rugged environments with the precision and reliability you'd expect from Fluke. See the invisible with the Fluke II-910 Precision Acoustic Imager. and co-powered by Ambionics. As you know, maintenance of a substation is essential to ensure uninterrupted electric supply to the using points. Timely maintenance helps to reduce outages, lower costs, and increase energy efficiency. Preventive and predictive maintenance can assist in reducing unplanned downtime and boost efficiency at the same time. Today, our distinguished panelists will discuss on why maintenance of substation equipment is critical. They will also explain some of the advanced solutions for electrical substation maintenance. I'm glad to welcome our distinguished panelists for the day. We are pleased to join by Mr. Vikram Gandutra, Vertical Marketing Manager, Utilities and GM, Strategy and Marketing, Digital Grid, Siemens Infrastructure at Siemens Limited. Welcome, Vikram, sir. Thank then, you. Mr. Prabhakaran PV, who is the Head Product Management at Fluke India. Welcome, Mr. Prabhakaran, sir. Thank you. And Mr. Saurabh Chakraborty, a young technocrat. He is the Senior Engineer at Power Consulting at Hitachi ABB Power Grids India. Welcome, Saurabh. Thank you, sir. Hello, sir. Now, without further delay, we will turn the time over to our opening speaker, Mr. Vikram Gandutra. Mr. Vikram is an industry stalwart in the field of power transmission and distribution, and particularly in the digitalization applications for power utilities. He is a member of the National Executive Council 2021 and 22, and past chair of uh, Smart Grid Division of Indian Electrical and Electronics Manufacturer Association, that is EMA, past chair of a World Utility Summit 2020, lead power distribution subcommittee of CII Inner Infra and a senior member of the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineer. I would request Mr. Vikram to set the tone of the session by sharing his presentation on why maintenance of substation equipment is critical. Welcome, sir. The major drivers of uh, maintenance is uh, to avoid a revenue loss due to asset downtime. Very clear. If there is uh, improper maintenance, then your assets are no longer functioning and assets are meant to function and be productive in the uh, manufacturing, whether it is delivery of power or whatever is the business activity. Then otherwise, uh, if they are not maintained properly, then we can have a problem of reduced assets. Life, the life of the asset gets reduced than what was it originally designed for. And uh, you know you have to write off those costs and replace them. Then other uh, also the third thing is uh, maintenance also calls for less spares to be kept. You know higher equipment failure means uh, if there are badly maintained equipment, then you have to keep more spares. Then you have to keep you know uh, a cost which is locked there. And in the power sector, what are the products that we maintain? Primary. Equipment includes the medium voltage panel, power transformers, circuit breakers, cables, and overhead lines. And on the secondary side, what we call the automation system, protection devices, switches, and firewalls. What are the types of uh, uh, you know, maintenance reactive? Yeah, that is, your circuit breaker has already blown up, yeah, or some CT has uh, failed. Then you run and try to find a spare and replace it. Predetermined is something like uh, you will 
know that after maybe 10,000 operations, you have to do certain thing or after one year, you have to do something. Preventive is that you know that uh, you can see that there is uh, something which could go wrong. Corrective is that you see something already going wrong, but it has not yet failed. Yeah, then you can uh, take an action. Condition based is something even more refiner. That means you look at the uh, condition and then decide how much uh, maintenance is required. And predictive is something that you pre already predict. Yeah, that uh, by the time of after six months, I will need to make a major overhaul because my circuit breakers have had so many operations by that date. So I will need to spend some uh, time and money on doing this predictive maintenance. So what is the impact on the OPEX and CAPEX programs? So this uh, first graph, it shows the health index. Health index is from zero to 10. 10 is uh, the uh, most, uh, uh, I would say, the worst uh, sort of health of the equipment and zero is the best health. And importance is the relative importance of that equipment for the uh, organization, for the utility. So one is that there is no, uh, in this area, no, not much uh, strategic or importance for that equipment. And on 10 is very high uh, strategic equipment. If you are strategically low and your equipment is uh, healthy, then you don't need to even do the normal maintenance if the you know breaker is not even operating uh, maybe once in a year then you can decide whether you need to follow the oem uh, guidance at all or not and if it is for you know uh, health is poor then you need to follow oem uh, specified uh, uh, in you know uh, maintenance schedule and in between also you can decide how to do it but for more strategic equipment if the health is poor, then you have to not only do it for OEM uh, guided maintenance, but also even regular monitoring, regular inspection of that, which is to be done more than what even the OEM has uh, recommended. Yeah, So that is the sort of uh, plotting you need to do about your equipment. And uh, you can have prescriptive solutions. You can have uh, predictive data management. You can, you can have also solutions like condition monitoring. Now, let me also take you through some uh, innovative solutions, what we are now using the power of digitalization. And here we see that uh, there is something which we call the grid diagnostic suite. And there is a uh, CProtect dashboard application for protection of uh, the uh, protection and control devices. Then we have something to monitor the power cables and overhead lines. Then the distribution transformer monitoring unit and uh, cyber security uh, landscape, which is there to protect against cyber security threats. And all this is uh, based on our, uh, you know, uh, cloud, Mindsphere cloud, which is an application built uh, Siemens for the power industry. Does it help? So if you look at here, if there is a fault, and if you do not have all these uh, tools, then there is a time for fault alert. That means indication that there is a fault, then the travel time of the engineer to the location in the network and locate the fault and repair it. Now, where this technology helps is in alerting for the fault. So if it was uh, this much time which was needed earlier, now only less than half of that is needed. It will save money for your uh, utility and uh, your application. Then if you have a uh, overhead line, again, there are devices like this uh, fault sensing and uh, fault, uh, you know, communication uh, gateways. And uh, these are the devices which are mounted on the medium voltage 11 kV, 33 kV network. They communicate with the gateway here. Gateway is solar powered and it communicates over cloud again to the engineer's mobile phone to the app. And they're also, they are able to localize and detect where is the fault location and analysis and events and uh, reporting is also done. Then you have a fault management which is able to predict that which is the area which is more prone to faults and uh, where it should go and uh, look for the solution. Yeah. 
in operation management and asset management and advanced customer information is available through this uh, technology now looking at the uh, transformers so lot of our transformers are always failing so there are of course uh, revenue loss due to transformer downtime undetected leakage and theft is there and of course asset uh, uh, the transformers are to assets are to be written off and uh, non optimal spending of uh, the asset maintenance and invest inventory cost of the spare transformer has to be kept now uh, why is it important it's important because uh, 90% of the uh, lt side losses can be detected at the dt level itself you know either it is uh, the dt has failed or some cable to the dt has failed and that is why it is important to monitor this particular device so there we have uh, again solutions through digitalization of auditing of the energy which is there and that uh, helps us to identify if there are any losses or pilferage and uh, then also we monitor uh, some faults then we know that this data is available and how many faults have happened that that helps us to keep a spare inventory level and uh, network optimization yes so network optimization can also be done because we know which are the transformers which are getting overloaded which are underloaded then you can shift some loads and have a more balanced system and uh, then field for automation also maintenance activities with gis mapped fleet level condition monitoring so this sort of uh, digitalization tools is there and then with the modern technology we have this uh, uh, yeah, external box which can be used even in uh, existing dts and this is uh, using siemens uh, thermo hydraulic transformer model for accurate monitoring of oil and uh, oil and temperature levels and uh, yeah so this is uh, something which is uh, now very very useful and uh, this is how it will work uh, that the sensors are on the transformer this device uh, is uh, like a, uh, a, you know installed on the dt with a magnet and it is also communicate over uh, the uh, cloud and gives all the information about hot spots and other uh, trends to the uh, uh, utility engineers now coming to look at what is the future now so that was about the remote service and uh, you know that is something which we are already working and uh, it is being used by uh, some of our customers and that is how we provide uh, even from very remote areas the services of experts to uh, the, our customers yeah, who may not have the time to travel in such a short uh, duration so they can solve the problems even from remote. Now let us look at another application that is uh, augmented operation manual guide for uh, MV switchgear. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, Mr. Vikram for highlighting uh, why maintenance of uh, substation equip, uh, equipment is uh, critical. Now in this uh, Mojapur industry development debate on uh, substation maintenance powered by Fluke India and co-powered by Ambionics, I would invite Mr. Saurabh Chakrabhi. Saurabh is uh, working as senior engineer at uh, Hitachi ABB Power Grids with over 14 years as a consultant. Uh, now, Saurabh will explain the challenges in substation equipment maintenance and repair. This is a very crucial uh, topic to discuss today. Welcome, Saurabh. What I encountered that, that is three major challenges are there. That is shutdown. Shutdown is a big, uh, big challenges for us because uh, shutdown is a thing where the the team member can safely work or execute the work in very safe mode. And second one is equipment condition. Third one is management control and skill skilled person. That is proper shutdown and safety during execution of this work. So proper isolation again, proper isolation of a feeder is very much required because most of the time the, the feeders are in remote location. So whether this is uh, uh, fully isolated or not, so we have to recon uh, reconfirm. Nowadays, uh, the most of the panels break a rack in rack out only possible when um, when the, uh, only the breaker door only open when the air breaker is at racked out position. But previously at old model breakers, there are uh, uh, rack in rack out operation you can do by op opening the panels. Third point is movement of ladder up or shifting or lifting uh, arrangement inside the AIS. So uh, normally what happened in 
air insulated substation uh, uh, one feeder is in charge mode and another feeder is in in, uh, uh, in shutdown mode where we have to work so during uh, in most of the cases the clearance height is very less in 33 kv or or uh, 166 kv switch yard so while move, uh, movement the ladder or lifting arrangement during that time that special care to be taken and this is a very serious challenges because it can cause this the the accident and fourth point is maintain proper safety during height of the work because at, at 132 kv level or 220 kv level some breaker uh, or some uh, ct or isolator maintenance has to carried out so during that time the lineman or the efficient person who can climb up on that um, porcelain uh, porcelain insulator and to connect uh, connect their uh, testing probes or clean the equipments so there is a less chance of connects uh, uh, there is a possibility of high possibility of risk so so there also is special care to be taken and use of proper tools work, working on low voltage system uh, this is the best practices where uh, a person can operate the breakers using 40 kl r flash shoot so where the uh, the the risk level can be reduced and uh, this is a 40 kl per centimeter square this is a arc flash shoot where uh, where also the if any arc arc will happen then he can reduce the uh, 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 The, the level of risk these are the voltage related tools we are using at site this is monitoring of equipment condition so monitoring of equipment condition is a very challenging for us because uh, first point is con- condition monitoring while system is in charge condition so during this condition some persons or some technician has to go in front of the panel uh, with having some check check points where he has to check any abnormality sound is there or any um, any and any whether the leds are glowing or not or this kind of checks he has to done but without taking precaution or protection so it there is a possibility of uh, uh, any any abnormality inside a panel he may get electrocuted so what we are doing we are during measurement of energy or the condition monitoring we are using 8 kal per centimeter square arc flash shoot this uniform and uh, this is a hood this is also 10 kal per centimeter square where, uh, from where he can safe fill fill himself a safe and this one is a arc flash boundary where anything has to observe without this protection he, he he has to stand outside this yellow boundary and he has to check all the things and and the challenges in uh, that is a shutdown time in new plants new equipment there may less problem but where the uh, when the plant is more old or uh, older plants the equipments having much number of problems as the breakers they have already crossed their his uh, number of uh, operations so uh, mechanical problem is coming will come to complete all the whole task within a fixed schedule of time is a challenging for us third one is the atmospheric condition because a high humid area or coastal areas this uh, this is a big problem this is a humidity uh, level is high and inside a, inside the cubicle the space heater is in defective mode or or the or its rating is less so after certain time 5 to 10 years later this kind of problem may come so where we observe then uh, some discharge partial discharge is there then it may be a tripping of feeders this kind of problem will also come aging of equipments aging of equipments definitely a big problem because aging of equipments it will create a number of problems which can which can reduce the reliability of a system and new problems arising are arise during maintenance during maintenance for the older equipments one parts we are planning to change but during maintenance what do you observe then another another things to be another problem is coming so this is also a big challenge that within a schedule or particular time we have to revive the system and also availability of proper spares so uh, thank you sora for highlighting the challenges in uh, substation equipment maintenance and uh, now i will invite mr prabhakaran pv to talk about some of the advanced test and measurement equipment for substation maintenance Mr Bhagakaran heads the product management team at Fluke India with uh, more than 25 years in the service industry and in different capacities of managing maintenance tools and services welcome Mr Bhagakaran the the safety of uh, men and machineries and assets are very critical that is why maintenance is 
very, very important. If you don't maintain your assets and uh, equipments, it can come off any time and it will be disastrous to the uh, man who is manning that or operating it or the machinery itself can go off and improve reliability. What do you mean by re reliability when you want to rely upon certain things, especially in power utility and substations, you are actually providing power to the people or the customers. And you have the responsibility to uh, give them the uninterrupted supply so that they can continue with their work. And they can rely upon what exactly the, the uh, work they have to do from the, the utility provider. And availability and quality. It is not only providing the, uh, the uh, electricity, it also needs to be quality power so that the every operator or every customer can deliver whatever their uh, output is. Then reduce the cost. What I'm going to talk here today is only three aspects of it. That is power and power quality, then thermographic imaging and partial discharge. Interestingly, whether it is a uh, pre-planned maintenance or a predictive maintenance or condition-based maintenance, maintenance needs to be done by the individuals or the maintenance engineers. And you need equipments which can help you to see what exactly you are doing and how exactly the machines are performing. That is where Fluke helps you. And power quality, this is what actually the quality power is the need of the hour, not only for the industrial industries, uh, not only for the cities, even for village. And in the last two years, we are all learning that the need of quality power, even in the last mile of a smallest village is critical for delivering the quality output from a country like India, where the resources are uh, rich. And we are, our engineers and scientists are working from the smallest villages also. That's why quality power is important. And that is where, why, why the quality is deteriorating day by day? Because the nonlinear loads are there, that is, Loads today are majority are non-linear and there is no linear loads anymore. And distributed generation. Today we generate in different different points because we use the uh, coal for generation, we use the uh, solar for generation, we use even our ro rooftops for generating power. And all this power is getting uh, connected to the uh, grid through a smart grid mechanism. And all these individuals, the new technology or the green tech uh, generation capacity or generation systems are much uh, weaker compared to our older uh, cousins, its older cousins. That means it is weaker when something goes bad and the reliability get into a uh, problem. That is why it is very, very uh, critical for the utility companies or the user to ensure good power quality uh, methods and standards into their facilities. Then changing regulations. In fact, India is going to implement the uh, Electricity Act 2020, which is going to put a uh, penalty on both customers and the uh, supplier's end. That means both the supplier, as that is the utility company, and the end user has the responsibility to use the power responsibly. And if that is not met, there is a penalty for each of these parties. And sensitive loads and customers. Why this sensitive? Because today everything is digital. And in the digital era, even the uh, components or the laptops or the, uh, the uh, semiconductor devices which you use is more sensitive than the previous era. And that is why you have to be much sensitive or your power must be much higher standard than before. And as I said earlier, the customers are more sensitive. The every stage, every whether it is a city or a town or a village, the people are using for critical applications. There you need to deliver good quality power. Similarly, increasing demand. When I say increasing demand, the industrial demand is going up, uh, household demands are going up, and every aspect electricity. Without electricity, we cannot live. We can live inside four walls, but just imagine without electricity, how long you can live. That is what is proven in the last one and a half years. That way, what we can provide is here are a couple of power quality analyzers and uh, the reporting tools which can give you the complete analysis of power and power quality parameters in the way you want. The changing regulations are asking for IEEE 519 latest edition reporting 
and the uh, demands and the power quality parameters as per those records. And we have this uh, perfect solutions uh, already available for you, and that can help you to meet those coming up regulations. Similarly, thermography. Thermography can be your third eye to uh, find what is the temperature differences in utility equipment. And many a time, partial discharge detection is not happening in many of the utility companies. What happens when the partial discharge gets there and it is uh, non, not attended for a long time? The partial discharge is a kind of continuous discharge between two points. And if it is not attended, it can expand and the complete insulation breakdown can happen. And a costly equipment like a transformer or a kind of a generator or any of those large motors, it operating in high voltages, it can uh, become a piece of charcoal or a, uh, ashes in no time if you are not attending the partial discharge. And here is the tool what we have developed recently. It is an acoustic imager, which can detect the partial discharge through the uh, acoustic signals or the sound signals coming out of the partial discharge coils. And this can easily show you how this uh, uh, partial discharge points, just like each of these points, it will highlight and then show that this is the point it is. And that too, you need not to go near to the uh, area where the operating voltages are very high and you need to be extra cautious about the high voltage. And from a distance of 50 meters or 70 meters or 100 meters, you will be able to detect this kind of uh, partial discharge. And the same instrument can be used for various other uh, leakage detections also, like air or gas or steam detection or vacuum detection. And this can be a multi-purpose device for detecting leaks or detecting partial discharge, especially for this audience, that is the, uh, the partial discharge with the the high voltage equipment is very critical, whether it is in the design stage or in the quality verification stage or the product testing stage or even in the maintenance stage. This can be a good tool for you to find out the partial discharge, which is a silent killer. Thank you uh, so much, Mr. Prabhakaran. It was an enlightening uh, presentation on uh, advanced test and measurement equipment for uh, substation maintenance. Thank you so much. Now we are going to have a panel discussion on maximizing substation resiliency through predictive maintenance. As with, uh, can I start with Mr. Uh, Gandutra to talk about uh, the importance of predictive maintenance for substation. So how important it is, sir? I see two problems. Uh, in fact, three problems. One is that uh, aspiration of our consumers are of electricity are going up. When I was a child, then if uh, electricity went off, uh, in my area for the whole night in summer, then we would only walk on the street and uh, come back and sleep. But today, if in uh, 40 degrees your electricity goes off for even one hour, there will be political problem and uh, law and order problem. So that is one major uh, issue of aspiration. And, uh, the second is that uh, the networks have become very complex. Yeah, our all grids and uh, they're uh, become much, much more complex than before. Uh, they, they need to be monitored and uh, controlled in a much finer uh, manner. And thirdly, the most important is that uh, the know-how, the trained engineers are not available at every location and uh, their availability is very uh, limited. So what does that mean? That means that to manage uh, the social problem, you manage the technical problem and manage the human problem. You cannot sit back and relax. You have to have a, a use of technology, whether it is for prediction or whether it is for real-time monitoring. Whatever it is, it depends on the maturity of the organization. It depends on the availability of the budget and it depends on the criticality of the uh, 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 equipment which has to be maintained. So, uh, yes. Mr. Prabhakaran, uh, you are the solution provider. So, what are the technologies available to facilitate predictive maintenance and how Fluke is positioned in this segment? Can you just tell us more about that? Uh, in fact, uh, the, uh, the predictive maintenance or to say proactive maintenance or a condition-based mon uh, monitoring and uh, maintenance, you cannot have everything together or go with only one. 
what you have to do is to maintain or it is an art of uh, managing the people resources and the technology because you have to uh, create the criticality levels of your uh, uh, supercritical equipments then subcritical and the least critical equipments and then adopt the different techniques of uh, uh, maintenance that is the best way to ensure that you are getting the right type right manpower and right solutions and when it comes to fluke fluke gives the best test tools see when you are doing measurement your whole dependency on measurement is very high and if you cannot uh, depend on the measurement you cannot do any correct measurements because if you can measure then you can correct it that is a principle right and that is what we give we give the test equipments uh, which can give the confidence to the engineer so that he can correct confidently and make a better performing system so before concluding today's session we would like to thank our distinguished panelists mr vikram gandu sir thank you so much sir once again thank you thank you so much thank you so much mr prabhakar ji and mr saurav chakravarty for sharing mm -hmm. your expert opinion thank you so much all of you and we thank sponsor of this session fluke india and co sponsor ambionics thank you so much Please don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and press the bell icon.